Okay, hello again everybody. This is Steven once again, and in this tutorial I will be going over TinyDB and saving what we might call rows and columns of information. There are some people on the forums that believe that you cannot save rows and columns of information in a tiny DB like you might do in something like Microsoft Access or Microsoft Excel. That is partially true, but not entirely accurate. You can save rows of information as uh, text boxes like we will do in this. Uh, use a tag in TinyDB as a row and then subsequent information will be saved under a list and those will correspond with the column of information for that particular row heading. As you can see in this design screen we've got four text boxes, a save button, a button here that says set a picture as a checkbox where we can check if this person is a relative of ours and a list picker to show whether or not uh, there's a name that's been saved to load the information. These text boxes here, this there's a person's name and then in this one here we'll input a date of birth and here we'll input a phone number and then here we'll insert the email address and then whether we want to display a picture or not, we'll click this button which will load just a uploaded image that I've already added, the, the mole picture from the mole mash tutorial. We will display here if we click this button and then we'll save the value of this checkbox into our DB. And I'll show you how you can pull that information out of the tiny DB and upload to each individual checkbox or excuse me text box as well as whether or not there's a picture and the value of this checkbox. Pull up the blocks editor here and as you can see I've already populated my elements with code blocks. The first code that I usually program ends up being my save button where the tiny db store value element is usually the first thing that I end up creating because this is the, basically the backbone of the program and what I'm trying to do with the program. The rest of it is just drawing the information out or checking whether the information is really there. This is the backbone of the program. As you can see I have a giant if else statement in here that basically says if whatever I enter into the name text box already exists in my global variable then I basically don't want the program to do anything when I hit the save button because that would overwrite whatever I've already got saved. If it does not exist in the list then we want to store the name as a tag which will be our row heading as you would see in Microsoft Access or Microsoft Excel and then under that row heading we will have our column of information which we will store using a list of info as opposed to a column. This will be our this will act as our column of information. So we're going to upload the date of birth, the person's phone number, their email address, as well as whether or not we set a picture and if we checked the box that they were a relative of ours. Once we store that information into the TinyDB under that row heading, we then save that row heading as a selectable person from our global list here. And then we now will store that master list under another tag that we will pull when the screen dot one initialize element gets called. <clears throat> Once the that goes through, we then say we excuse me, we then load our list picker with our 
global list of people. And then these next code blocks here will be our clearing of our screen so we can load another person if we want to do so. So we set the picture to blank, we uncheck the box if it was checked, we clear the text fields, and we then in this one here enable the list picker because I have it set for disabled. If there was no names in the list picker it would be disabled. So once we save a name, we want to enable that so then we can select that person from the list. This particular block here uh, is just the picture button picture dot click, which basically says load a picture into the picture. So we can then upload that here to our tiny DB. And I just messed up my list here. Let's fix that again. Oh, my program is causing problems. Let's try this. There we go. This smaller so it's all visible. Okay, now that we've got that fixed, you can look over here and you see the screen one dot initialize. And this will basically, this first if statement checks that this tag we created over here is empty. And if it is empty, then not to do anything, but if it's not empty, we want to set our variable list up with the value that was stored under the tag, and then we want to load the list picker elements with this list of information which was saved to the TinyDB. Then we have our second if statement which says if the list of people is not empty, then we want to enable our list picker. Because remember, I have it set for disabled at the start of the program. Once that's done, we then move on to coding our list picker and what we want that to do when we select the name. Now, the way this works is that we've loaded the elements of the list in here. And remember the elements of our list of people is the tag of text name dot text, the person's name that we saved, our our row heading in our database is our elements in our list picker. So when we select a person's name from our list picker, it will then load this list of information or our column from our database and pull each column cell out and populate the text blocks as well as the picture and the checkbox if they correspond to the column cell that we set up here in our list. Now this text block here, excuse me, this select list item block here has an index that it's it's asking for and this index exactly matches with the positioning of each list item that we set up. So list index number one matches list item number one. So if you're going to call a list item of index number two, you need to make sure that what you're plugging into this is actually the second list item. So for instance, this checkbox will not work if we say that we're going to pull the list item of index one and put in our checkbox value. It's error. We're going to get an error code because you can't populate text in it. The, the text does not work as a value for a checkbox. It's got to be true or false. So this number has to match up exactly with the positioning of each element in the list. In the next tutorial, I'll go over how this actually works, and we'll see it in design time.